You ready, you ready, you ready, you ready, you ready? I'm ready for a little partial fraction action. Yes. What do you want to do? What do I want to do? I want to unadd this fraction. Yeah. I want to first factor the denominator. Factorization came with the problem. Nice. Okay. So what I intend to do, um, what is this example? This example is um, factor decomposition, or yeah, partial fractions with linear denominators that don't duplicate. Yes, they're not raised to any power. Okay, so here's what I need. I need an A and I need a B. Right, these are linear powers. So my numerator, when I unadd them, needs to be um, one degree less. Okay, so this is degree one. So I want a degree zero term. Okay, this marker um, may be dead. Come on, marker. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, we're gonna have to put you away. Why? Because you can't draw that A. Okay, and then I want this over, my first factor in my denominator. Uh-huh, and then I wanna see what fraction I need to add to that fraction. This one might be gone too. Shoot, Um, looks like a, you're my boy, Blue. Get out of here. Okay, X minus one. Just like that, I like that. Oh, now I wanna go through the process of adding those two fractions. Why do you wanna do that? Um, because I'm trying to unadd these fractions. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. But yes, it does. I've separated these two and I've called it equal. If I'm gonna add these two, I'm gonna need a common denominator. And here what we see, oh we, I need another, ah, oh, ah, oh, um. My common denominator is going to be that denominator. So I'm going to need to multiply this by an x minus 1. Okay. Or the magic one. Uh-huh. Because I intend on adding these two fractions. And then I want to add these two. I'm going to multiply that one by x plus 1. Yeah. Because that's the part to the common denominator that this fraction was missing. And then that's an x plus 1. Just like that. I like that. Oh. Now that I got a common denominator, what can I do to the numerators? Add them. Yeah, indeed. I do want to add those two. And when I do, I'm going to get a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 1 all over my common denominator. x minus 1 times x plus 1. Very nice. I'm going to take it right on down here with this squeaky marker. Yeah. So I'm taking a look at that. It goes... And I have ax minus a plus bx plus one plus b. Tee hee, tee hee. That's why it makes that sound. So that I don't get, forget to take it to both terms in that binomial. All right. And then that's still over my common denominator. x minus one times x plus one. Okay, now I'm using the traditional method. There is somewhat of a shortcut method. If I go and I let x be zeros of the denominator, but I don't like that. Mm -mm. No way. Ready, 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 ready. What do I intend on doing? I've made this claim that this fraction is the same as that one. So what I want to do is I want to match the coefficients on each one of those terms. That's how those two polynomials are going to be equal. Okay, so then I have a plus b x. What did I do? I added the coefficient of my x term. And then this is going to be plus uh, b minus a. I just commuted those terms. Uh-huh. All over that common denominator. x minus 1 times x plus 1. Now it's our claim that these two fractions are the same. So what's that going to get us? It's going to get us a system. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Here, my coefficient on this x is 1, so I'm going to match the coefficients on that term. And then here we go. I'm going to have a plus b is equal to, what was my coefficient? It was 1. That's fun. And what else do I have? I have, I have, I have minus a plus b. Again, commuting those backwards. Right. Why did you commute them in the first place? Huh. It just happened, man. Oh boy, that system, man. I have two equations with two unknowns. 
you have three legitimate ways, probably going to throw out graphing. Okay, so that's out. So now we can either use substitution or elimination. This one's begging you to eliminate. Why? Because you already have those variables opposite. So we add them. Okay, I'm seeing some fractions in our future. Um, to be, resist the Shakespeare jokes. Yeah. Um, to be is three. <laughs> Even more poetry. Okay. Finish him. Here my be gonna be three halves. Very nice. Once I have that, once I have that, I can go through and I can back sub it into one of these. Which one? Probably that first one. So then I have a plus three halves is one. <laughs> I see where this is going. I subtract off the three halves from both sides. And A turns out to be, wait for it, wait for it, minus one half. Very nice. Okay. So what do I have? I have my A and I have my B. So what am I going to do? I'm going to finish that fraction. I'm going to take that action back up to the original. Oh, boy. Yes. So I can write it in one nice tight package. X plus 2 divided by X plus 1 times X minus 1 is, wait for it, what was my A? It was minus 1 over. Now, my denominator was X plus 1 on that term. So I'm going to have 1 half. All right, I'm putting the 2 down in the denominator and X plus 1 right there. Okay, and then what am I going to add it to? I'm going to add it to 3 halves x minus 1. And at that point, I'd be done. Box and flower. I successfully unadded those. I'm going to go get some new markers.